All right, so we have a word problem here that is a percent change word problem. Now, the struggle that I see some students have with percent change word problems is they're not sure how to get started because there's so many different strategies to solve these kind of problems. So let's just read the problem and figure out what approach we're going to use in this situation. So the problem reads that Mary's salary increased by $4,500, which represents a 15% raise. What is Mary's new salary? Well, one thing that we can see is that we have an increase. So this percent change is specifically a percent increase, and it increased by $4,500. So in this problem, we're not looking for what the increase is. They already gave us the increase. What we have to do is work backwards to figure out what the original amount was. So the way that I interpret this problem is that 15% of some original number is equal to 4,500, and we can state this algebraically. So I'm going to write 15% as a decimal, or 15 hundredths, multiplied by some original total, I'll just call this x, is going to be equal to 4,500. All right, now that we have an algebraic equation, we can simply solve for x. And notice with this equation, x is being multiplied by a number. So to solve for x, we have to do the inverse of that, which is to divide. So to solve this equation, we have to take this coefficient of 0.15 and divide this left-hand side of our equation by 0.15. And to balance our equation, we have to divide the right-hand side of our equation by 0.15. So on the left-hand portion of our equation, these coefficients cancel out to be positive 1, because anything divided by itself is positive 1. And positive 1 times x is just x. And x will be equal to whatever 4,500 divided by 0.15 is. So let's go off to the side and determine what that is. So we have to take 4,500 and divide that by 0.15. And remember, when dividing with a divisor that contains a decimal, you have to move that decimal all the way to the end of the divisor. And you have to move the decimal on the inside an equal number of place values. So we have to put a decimal here, and we have to add two zeros, so we can move it two places to the right. And then we move it straight above. All right. Now, 15, of course, does not fit into 4, so we cannot write anything on top of that 4. But it can be divided into 45 exactly three times. And because it fits into 45 exactly three times, and the rest of the place values are occupied by zeros, we can just put zeros in those positions. All right, so we would say that Mary's original salary was $30,000. But we have to be careful. We actually did not answer the question. Because I want to know what Mary's new salary is. So if this is her old salary, and she got a raise of 4500 we have to add 4500 to 30000 which would give Mary a total salary of $34,500. All right, let's look at another way that we could have solved this problem. Now, many students tend to think in terms of proportions. And by a proportion, I mean one rate that is equal to another rate. Now, notice that the rate given is a 15% raise, and 15% represents part of an original total. So we can write 15% as 15 out of 100. And because this numerator here of 15% represents the part, we have to write 4,500 for the numerator on this side as this represents. A part of some total. And that total can be represented by a variable such as x. So 4,500 is part of some total, which is equivalent to 15 parts per 100. So what we can do now is do a little cross multiplication to set up an equation. So we should know from our previous lessons from proportions that when you cross multiply in one direction, the product of those two values will be equal to the product of the other two values when you cross multiply. And because we're multiplying this by 100, we can write 4,500 and just write two zeros at the end. 
So 15 times some value is equal to 450,000. And what we can do now to isolate this x here is just divide by this coefficient of 15. So the answer is going to end up being 450,000 divided by 15. So let's go ahead and see what that is. Well, we know that 15 fits into 45 exactly three times. And this is followed by four zeros, so we can just write four zeros after that three. So you can see we ended up coming up with 30,000 again, which is the original amount that Mary was paid. But remember, her new salary is the original plus that 4,500, which ends up being a total of 34,500. All right, let's go ahead and demonstrate one more way that we could do this problem. All right, now let's say you get a problem like this for homework and your teacher demands that you have to set up an equation using the percent change formula. Well, let's go ahead and try to do it using that formula. So percent change is equal to the new value minus the old value, which is going to give you the increase or decrease. And you have to divide that as part of an original total. So that's divided by the old total or the original. And then they say you have to multiply that value by 100. Because the percentage you get from this part of your equation is going to be in the form of a decimal. So moving the decimal two spaces to the right is going to convert it into a percentage. All right, what we have to do now is plug everything into the equation that is given from the problem itself. So the percent change given is a 15% raise. So for percent change, we're going to substitute that with 15. All right. Now, they don't give us what the new salary is. That's actually what we're looking for. And they don't give us what the old salary is. But we do know whatever the new salary is, minus the old salary, it's going to end up equaling 4,500. So even though we don't know what each one of those amounts are, we would assume that the difference of those is going to be 4,500. And we have to divide that by whatever the old or the original amount is. And I'm just going to write O as a variable for old amount. And then we have to multiply that by 100. So now what we have is an equation where we have to solve for the variable O to figure out what that old amount actually is. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the right-hand side of this equation and just simplify it a little bit. So let's think of this right here as a fraction multiplied by a whole number, which can be written as a fraction. So what we're going to do first is we're going to rewrite this as 15 is equal to 4,500 times 100, which is just 4,500 with two more zeros added at the end. And on the bottom, we have O times 1, which would just be O. All right. And what we have to do next is whenever you have a fraction when solving an equation, you have to take your denominator and move it to the other side, even if your denominator is a variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by O. Think about it as O over 1. Whenever you're multiplying fractions and you have the same numerator and denominator, they always cancel out to be one whole. So all we did is multiply O in such a way that we're going to get one whole. Now what we have to do is multiply the other side by the variable O. All right. Um, but I'm going to rewrite this so it says 15 O instead of O15 because you see the coefficient first when writing algebraic equations. So we have 15 multiplied by O is equal to 450,000. And now we have to divide both sides by 15. The 15s on the left-hand side cancel out to be one whole. So that's 1 O is equal to 450,000 divided by 15, which is 30,000. 
Now remember, this 30,000 just represents the original amount of money that Mary made. We have to take this 30,000 and add it to 4,500 still, which is a total of $34,500. So that was three different ways of coming up with the same answer, which is why sometimes these problems can be confusing because your teacher might want or demand that you do it a certain way when really there's so many different ways that you can come up with the same answer. I just want to say thanks for checking out this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me at any of my social media sites that are listed on the screen. 